In this video, we're going to be looking at inequalities. So here we've got two new signs you need to get used to. We've got a less than sign and a more than sign. Now, before we continue this video, if you haven't already done so, I will definitely watch the video on solving equations first. It will make life a lot more easier if you've done that video first. Okay, so we need to get used to seeing these signs and know which one is which. And to begin with, students sometimes mix them up. So how are we going to remember which one is which? So what you could do is remember the less than sign which I've got here is pointing to the left of the number line. So if you imagine it's a rocket, it's traveling in the direction which is getting less. Why imagine it's a rocket? Let's go ahead and make it into a rocket, just in case you have problems imagining it. So here we've got a rocket and it's traveling to the left in the less than direction on the number line. And here we've got the more than sign and it's facing in the more than direction on the number line. And if you imagine it's a rocket, it's getting more on the number line. And there it goes. So here we've got the signs again, but they've got an extra line on it. And all that line means is or equal to. So the less than will now be less than or equal to. And the more than will also become more than and equal to. Now don't get too confused yet because I'm going to explain exactly how these work in a moment. Okay, so what have we got here? It says x is more than or equal to 3 because of the extra line is or equal to. So it's not just more than, it's more than or equal to. Now it says x is more than or equal to 3. Now what does that mean? Which numbers are we talking about? Think of some numbers which are more than or equal to 3. So we're thinking of numbers which are 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. But because it says or equal to, we can also include 3. That's what the or equal to sign means. If the or equal to sign was not there, we would not include 3. Now I did say 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but it doesn't necessarily need to be integers. It could be any number more than 3, including 3.5, 3.7, 4.5 and so on. Now let's go ahead and represent this on the number line because you need to know how to do that. So start off by drawing a circle on the 3. When we're including 3, which we are in this case because it says or equal to, 3, we want to colour this circle in. That shows we're including 3 as well. Then we put this arrow on, which represents 3 or more. So this number line is representing this inequality we have. x is more than or equal to 3. Now you don't need to make this arrow really, really long. The fact that it's in the right direction means it's including everything towards the right. So here we've got x is less than or equal to 5. Now which numbers are we talking about here? We're talking about numbers which are less than 5 or equal to 5. So we can include 5 as well. So we're talking about 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 and so on. Everything to the left of 5. So let's represent this on the number line. So we put our circle on 5 and we do need to colour it in because we're including 5. And we want an arrow to the left to show us all the numbers to the left of this number 5 here. Okay, now we've got x is more than minus 2. So what numbers are these? These are all the numbers which are more than minus 2, including minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, but we won't include minus 2. Even minus 1.5 would be okay, so long as you don't include minus 2. So let's put this on the number line. Okay, so we put a circle at minus 2. Now, this time we're not colouring it in because we don't want to include the minus 2. And we've got arrow to the right to represent all the numbers to the right of minus 2, all the numbers which are more than minus 2 because we've got that more than sign. 
Here we've got x is less than 1. So you're probably getting used to these now. So less than 1 would be 0, minus 1, minus 2, and all the numbers in between them as well. So it can be decimals as well. But you're not allowed to include 1 because it hasn't got that extra line showing or equal to. So let's go ahead and put this on our number line. So we put the circle on the 1 and we want everything to the left of it because it's a less than sign and we're not going to color this circle in. And it's as simple as that. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. Now when you see something like this, it simply means between minus one and five. That's all it means. Except in this case, we're including minus one because it's got the or equal to sign on the minus one, but we're not including the five because the five hasn't got an or equal to sign. So what does it mean? It means all the numbers between minus one and five including minus 1. So numbers like minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but not including 5. And it could also be decimal numbers. Okay, so let's put this in a number line. We need to start by putting some circles on minus 1 and 5. So we've got 1 on minus 1, and we're going to colour this one in because we're including minus 1, because it's got the or equal to sign on minus 1. And we've got a circle on the 5, but we're not circling this one in and you just simply join them up to show us all the numbers between them. Not too tricky, was it? Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly recap solving equations because the way we solve inequalities is exactly the same. It's not different at all. So how do we solve this? Well, we need to make x on its own, so we need to get rid of that plus three first. And how do we do that? Of course, we just subtract three from both sides. Subtracting three from the left-hand side simply leaves us with 2x. And we need to subtract 3 from the other side as well. 19 subtract 3 gives us 16. Next step, get rid of that 2. Now that 2 is times in x, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. So that 2x simply becomes x if you divide by 2. Now we need to divide the 16 by 2 as well. And of course that becomes 8. So here I've got the exact same thing, but instead of the equal sign, I've got a more than sign. And guess what? nothing is different. We do it exactly the same. You just don't write an equal sign. Instead, you just keep writing a more than sign. Take three from both sides and divide by two. Exactly the same as what we did when we we're solving the equation. And the answer is x is more than eight. And you just leave your answer like that. Let's try another one. Okay, so again, we're gonna solve it just like those equations. So let's add five to both sides to get rid of the minus five gone on the left hand side and the 16 has now become 21 because we added 5 to both sides. Now we need to simply divide both sides by 7. So the 7 went away on the left hand side like we wanted and the 21 became 3. And that's our answer. x is less than or equal to 3. Let's represent our answer on the number line as well. So we need to put a circle on 3 and we're going to colour this circle in because it says or equal to, that means we can include the actual three itself. And it's less than or equal to. So we need to represent all the numbers which are less than this. And we do it with an arrow to the left. Let's look at this one. Okay, so something tricky does happen on this one, but it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and try it. So we'll start by subtracting six from both sides. So it's gone on the left-hand side, and subtracting 6 on the right-hand side makes that 18 into 12. Now the left-hand side's got minus 3x, so we're going to divide both sides by minus 3 to get rid of it. Because remember, the minus 3 is times in the x. So something weird happens here. Now with inequalities, you're fine to treat it like an equal sign, apart from when you divide or times by negative. When that happens, you do as you would, but you also flip the direction of the inequality. So if it's less than, it becomes more than. If it's more than, it becomes less than. So this is the only time it's a bit different. When you're dividing or timesing by a negative. And look here, we need to divide both sides by minus 3. And minus 3, of course, is a negative. So it's going to happen here. So let's start by dividing both sides by minus 3. So the minus 3x became x as we wanted. And of course, 12 divided by minus 3 is minus 4. Because a positive divided by negative is negative. Now, we did divide by negative, didn't we? 
So what happens to the sign? It needs to change directions. And we've done it, we've changed the direction. So this is the only time when it's different to simply solving equations. So let's go ahead and put this on the number line. So we need to draw a circle on minus four and we're not going to color it in because it hasn't got the or equal to sign and it's more than. So we want to arrow to the right in the more than direction. Okay, so let's look at our last example. Now, this is the ones where it's between two numbers. So in the middle, it should simply be X. So let's try to make it just simply X in the middle. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that minus three. And how do we do that? We add three, but it's going to be add three on either side. So in the middle, the minus three has gone away. But remember, we have to add three to all the sections. So the two, we need to add three to that. That makes it five. And we need to add three to the 17, and that becomes 20. Now we just now we just simply need to get rid of that. Now we need to get rid of that five and the five is times next. So we're going to divide everything by five. So the five X becomes X. And on the left hand side, if we divide the five by five, we get one and 20 divided by five gives us four. So we've done it. It's between one and four, not including one and four. So let's put this on the number line. Now you only need to put it in the number line if the question tells you to do that. So we need a circle on one and four and none of them are gonna be colored in because we're not including either one and simply join them up and we're done. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.